Howdy folks and welcome to this unboxing video by Cranky Old Gamer. Yeah, that's me. And uh, I have got um, some products from the recent Kickstarter from Antimatter Games. The two new two-player starter sets from Antimatter Games for their two key games called Deep Wars and Shadow Sea. So I got advanced copies of these and I gotta tell you, I've been... Okay, full transparency, I have not... I've opened these boxes and I peeked inside. I have not gone through the contents, so I don't know exactly all the stuff that's in here. Um, so my reaction is going to be pretty authentic. Uh, but I got to tell you, I have been, uh, I've had these for about a day and a half now. Um, and I have been itching to open these up uh, and share them with you. So um, I'll try to, you probably know I'm a little bit of a, an adulterated fanboy uh, for this stuff. So I'll try to keep my uh, reaction pretty authentic and pretty uh, even even keel. But uh, I'm super excited about these. Look, look guys, these, we've been, we've been looking for these for a while. Antimatter has delivered. Um, this, I think these are going to be great products to get people into the game as well as kind of expand your collection uh, if you're already a player. So, um, you know, without further ado, I kind of want to just dive right in. There's two, like I said, there's two new box sets, right? They're two player starter sets uh, for both the Deep Wars line and the Shadow Sea line. So if you're unfamiliar with the game, Antimatter Games makes a, a game called Deep Wars and Shadow Sea. Uh, they're based in the same universe. One's a land version of the game and one's an undersea version. Basically, it's a... Um, 17th century explorers find ether tech and kind of this hidden technology and ancient elder gods and they're fighting over a uh, territory in the shadow sea which is basically an undersea continent uh, below, below the um antarctica of, of of earth so the technology has uh grown from what normally you would see in the 17th century from divers they've got explorer suits dive suits that have ether powered uh technology and there's magic and there's uh, long lost races and and all that good stuff. Land of the Lost meets Cthulhu meets Jules Verne uh, meets Awesome. So there have, as far as I understand, there has never been two player box sets for um, the Abyssal Realms, which is Deep War, the com combination of Deep Wars and Shadow Sea. Uh, so these are kind of brand new, um, and they are really looking sweet. So let's just kind of look at each one of the boxes, and after I open the boxes, we'll go into the contents. So um, the first one is from Deep Wars. This box set is called Battle for Diablo Reef. It's a two-player starter set by Antimatter Games. It's in this nice hard uh, board, you know, cardboard construction. It's got some nice stuff in here. Deep Wars is a 28 millimeter scale uh, tabletop war game set below the waves, um, you know, by Antimatter Games. It's not a toy recommended for children under age 12. Uh, requires some assembly. So there's some models in here that require assembly. So what you're looking at is the art for. Um, the models and the contents that are in the box itself. So if we flip this bad boy over, again, Diablo, two-player starter set, Deep Wars, two players battle in the deadly waters of an underground ocean known as the Shadow Sea, searching for treasures of Diablo Reef. Um, so uh, basically, I think uh, tabletop miniature battles in the watery abyss, I think everything that you see on here is what's in here. So yeah, it gives you the standard ages and ranges and number of players. And so the contents, um, three Dark Mariners. So there's this one, there's that one, and I think that one, three Dark Mariners resin miniatures, uh, three Fortune Hunters miniatures, so that's the leader there. Um, uh, oh, that's a Dark Mariners miniature right there. Um, one, two, three? Did I get that right? One, two, three, four. Okay, we'll figure it out. Um, two resin sharks. Um, oh, there's one, two, and three there. So yeah, I guess maybe I shouldn't be counting these in with these. But anyways, looks like you get uh, six miniatures or eight miniatures um, and the warband cards for them um, then the four creature model cards uh, there's ten, 10 special operation cards so that must be new uh, for this I, I don't know what that is but you know, I played a lot of deep wars and shadow so if you're a fan of the channel if you watch the bat reps you'll know that um, but uh, I, I think that's new so we'll, we'll figure out what that is four maps that are 18 by 24 inches that's probably about the right scale for a three miniature warband uh, two warband record sheets uh, status markers, printed cedar and wire sea creature markers, uh, movement sticks, which is great, some dice, and a rule book. Oh, 56-page uh, rule book with a campaign of eight scenarios. Okay, so that's the box. Uh, it's really solid construction. I like the artwork. Um, you know, pretty sturdy. It's probably something you could store stuff later on. You don't want to get rid of that box, I think. Um, that's a good box. Um, so let's open it up. So we'll we'll come back to this guy. Let's do Deep Wars first, um, and we'll come back to Shadow Sea. So I'm going to set that over here. 
so let's open this bad boy up and see what's inside. So again, I, I admit I have opened this once. I have seen the top of the contents, but I have not actually looked at them. So when we open this up, <gasps> here we go. All right, see, it's even got the cre hasn't been creased yet, guys. Come on, look. Okay, so you open the box and um, a little bit of packaging material. We're just gonna go and get, get rid of that. And interesting, but not what we're looking for. Ooh, we got some miniatures. Okay, it looks like we've got a lot of good mentions. Wow, look at the quality of those sculpts already. Even through the box. I promise we're going to open this up and look at each one in detail. But um, Okay, let's let's come back to that. That's the meat. Uh, let's talk about some of the So we get some dice. Those are some nice dice. Let's see. Let's open that up. And in Deep Wars and Shadow Sea, you only really need three dice. So those are some pretty cool. Those are nice dice. Look at those. I rolled a one. At least it's a little bit con consistent for how I roll. Um, yeah, that's a good activation right there. All right, so got some dice. That's great. Got some dice. You need dice for this game. Um, so if you're familiar with the Deep Wars and Shadow Sea game, uh, you, this is a uh, status symbol or status markers um, card. So you cut these out, and these are status markers that you put next to your model based on, you know, if you get hit and you take damage, you fall. Um, you, maybe your armor is corroding, you, maybe you're taking evasive action, the depth level that you're at, um, sometimes you get poisoned. So those are basically just status markers. You cut these out along the edges, should be pretty self-explanatory. Those are necessary for the game. So if you're new to the game, um, you use movement sticks, you don't do a measuring tape. If you're new to war games, uh, maybe that's, uh, you know, neither here nor there, but if you're uh, familiar with war games, but not familiar with, uh, Deep Wars and Shadow Sea, that you don't use a measuring stick. You use these measuring sticks. Or you don't use a measuring tape, excuse me, you use these measuring sticks. So you cut these puppies out too, um, and you use those. And each model tells you what kind of movement stick you use. If you're, if it doesn't say on your card, then you are a, um, a you use a medium move. Um, oh, a little nice thank you card for purchasing the Deep Wars product. Let's see if we can get that puppy to focus right there. Maybe, please. A little thank you card. That's very nice. Look at that. All right, thank you, Antimatter Games. Um, oh, these are the special operations cards. You know what? Let's let's come back to that. Like, I'll come back to that. Um, God, there's a good amount of stuff in here. These must be the Warband record sheets. Yep, looks like it's something you could kind of write your stuff on. I imagine you can photocopy these, and you know, you get some tech upgrades and whatnot. And maybe there's a little bit of campaign system in there. That's what that's for. So those are nice little tight record sheets. It's not like a huge roster that you've got to keep track of stuff on. That's, that's slick. Okay, what else is in here? Oh, there's a little marker. Look at that. You get a marker to mark down your stuff. That's sweet. All right. Um, wow. Oh, the rule book. Oh, God, I got to look at that. Well, these are slick. These looks like these are, these must be the maps. Okay, this is like a cutout. This must, yeah, okay, so this is a cutout. These are cutouts, I imagine. Yeah, because the blast template and the spray template, uh, these must have ankle biters. Those are um, terrain features that can attack you. Ancient ray gun, ancient death ray. Um, yeah, these are things, the whale carcass there. Uh, Doom Clam up there. Yeah, these are these are um, you can buy like the whale and the Doom Clam and the Kraken uh, and the Ancient Death Ray and the Ankle Biters. You can buy those off Antimatter Game Site, but these look like hey, if, as a starter set, you want to kind of play with those rules. You can just drop that on your table and kind of call that uh, terrain. But that's pretty slick. Um, these must be the maps. So let's see if we can. Uh, okay, these are okay. Gotcha. These are all kind of individual. So, if um, you can, oh, oh, look at that, you probably put them together. Like you could take those down on your table if you wanted to, or just kind of set them there. So these are actually the same art that's on their um, seafloor uh, vinyl mats that they sell on Antimatter Game Site. But here you go. You can kind of use a little small table, put these together, use that as your gaming mat. Sorry for bumping the camera. This looks like another one of their gaming mats. I think this is the temple seafloor map but anyways um the concept here is uh, i don't know if these go together or not but maybe they do i don't know but you can kind of put these yeah oh yeah there we go yep derp um you put these together and that that's your uh that's your game mat as it were that is super slick wow they i think you kind of you've got dice you've got models you got a game mat 
you basically got oh look at that one so here's the um the abyssal floor this is like you are really down in the abyss down at the bottom of the sea floor in the marianas trench or something and you've got some weird ether crystals kind of giving a little bit of light maybe but that's the um the abyssal zone complete darkness under the water and it looks like this is hey it's got a nice little 3d effect on that look at that that's uh the sub right that's the sub hey you put that together you know if you want to kind of play a boarding action game oh we should do that that'd be slick a little boarding action so you can use your breaching special rules to kind of break into that sub and do whatever you need to do get the ether crystals or something like that that's really slick i like that i, I could actually see using that in a regular game um that's nice really nice okay wow look at this all right set that over there so it looks like there's a rule book too battle for diablo reef game rules tactical managers battles um it's a nice book. It's a soft cover. It looks like it's about uh, 56, 55 pages ish. Um, you know, we'll go. Yeah, I'll we'll go over this a little bit more, but I just kind of want to thumb through it. Okay, they've got the all. Okay, gotcha. They've got all the basic rules in here. So this is looks like you know. Don't quote me on this, but it seems like this is enough for a regular game of Deep Wars because I recognize the text and the pictures and the titles here for you know this is what the regular rule books look like looks like but maybe slightly condensed version it's still got everything activation rules example activities that you can do yeah this looks like the full rules guys um then what happens in a combat yep so this is the full rules um this gives you everything to play the game all the rules that you need to play the game looks like it's right here okay we'll go into this in more detail i just kind of want to thumb through it real quick Elemental magic, psychic magic, campaigns. Okay, got campaign rules here. Good. I like this because the other, the big rule book is pretty, um, it's pretty thick and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just very dense. This is a nice condensed version of it. Oh, and here's some, um, some lore. I like that. Nice. Okay. That, I think that's new rule too for Diablo Reef. It's gotta be. Let's take a look at this, uh. Oh, and here's the scenario, and they kind of tell you how to set up your map. Okay, yep. Treasure. Okay, yeah, those things are treasure markers. Got it. And then some wild sea creatures, and then I assume you place your models there, and it tells you exactly what to do. Okay, we'll go over this in more detail. I just kind of want to give a feel for it. Scenario, blood in the water. Scenario 2. I'm imagining these are intended to play kind of in uh, in order. You know, the thing about this is that I this is a really nice book. I like the artwork. The, the binding is solid. It's not, you know, crappy put together. It's good quality. You know, Antibiotic Games puts out some good stuff. Uh, campaign rules, battle scenarios. Looks like if you want to do other battle scenarios other than the campaign, maybe that. Okay, we already kind of talked about that a little bit. Sunken Temple. That's okay. Looks like they're using each map. That's great. And they kind of tell you what each of these things do and what level they are. So that really kind of tells you exactly what you need to do. So if you're new to the game, obviously you want to read all of this stuff. If you're a veteran of the game, you know, this ought to all look pretty straightforward. But this is a really nice. There's more detail. Like in the main rule book, it gives you a description, but doesn't necessarily show you how to set up the map. These look like very much you set up the map in a certain way. Normally, you just kind of set it up. The players agree to set up the table in a certain way. Um, this looks good. Artifact of Death. Awesome. Sunken Hulk, yeah, that's a breaching mission, I bet. Yep, okay. Crimson Shadows, what's that all about? Okay, oh, and here's um, here's some of the bestiary. Yep, so it uh, looks like they give you Fortune Hunters and D uh, Dark Mariners in the box set and some Predatory Sea Creatures. So if you want the full range of rules of models, uh, this is not the rule book that has them. You can get the, line, uh, the rules online. Um... But, um, you know, this this is great. This is all the rules you need. I mean, I'm looking at all the... There's the basic stuff and even a little bit of the more of the advanced stuff. Uh, it's got all the ether, ether tech, the morale, the spells, the combat and weapons and all that stuff. So I think, you know, again, I'll look at this in more detail. We'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more in detail. But I think this is everything you need from a rules perspective. So that's delightful. It's not, it's not a digest. That's the full rules. Um, let's talk about the meat. Everybody's here to talk about, you know, we talked a little bit about potatoes and vegetables. Let's talk about the meat. So, um, models. Let's crack this open. Okay, so 
It's not that hard to open, folks. I'm just kind of being an idiot. All right, so it looks like, okay, so obviously they're giving you this pen because you want to put your cards in these sleeves and you can mark off the health boxes or whatever effects happen to your model. So they conveniently and nicely give you some sleeves and a pen. So that's a huge value. Um, and cards. So every model, again, if you're familiar with the game, I guess just kind of tune out here or just whatever. Uh, but if you're new to the game, every model in Deep Wars and Shadow Sea has a card um, and they have certain stats. And you can look at some of my other videos to say, you know, how to play Deep Wars. It'll tell you exactly what these these cards mean and their stats. And we won't go over those in too much detail other than we'll talk about what these models are and how, how you know, my impression of their stats and whatnot. But let's talk about the resin. Okay. So packaging... I gotta say, I'm gonna go directly to this guy because he is awesome. Look at that. So I think this is the, he's a bio, obliterator biomech. And I've, I, when I saw the concept art for this guy, I said I immediately, I have to get this guy. Um, so he looks pretty darn awesome. So he's pretty tentacly. Um, I'm assuming he's on a big base here. Put him there, yep. Um, and we got some tentacles here. You know, obviously we need to figure out how that works. Assuming it goes in there, something like that. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, that's a little bit of flash that I have to clip off. But, you know, you got a tentacle, right? For your Dark Mariners. You got to have tentacles on your Dark Mariners. It's not correct if it isn't. Here's this, um, what kind of gun does he have? Some kind of plasma gun, I'm imagining. He's got a disruptor torpedo, excuse me. Um, so that's that. So, shoot little torpedoes there with that. So this guy kind of goes together like this. Like I said, I've been wanting this guy for a long time. So he's going to go together. That's his gun right there. So that's your biomech on the Dark Mariner side. Um, I'm just going to pull these out, not necessarily in any order. I mean, look at these sharks. These are fantastic. I mean, these are way better than the sharks that I normally play with or see play. Like, usually they're, you know, like the little t rubber toys from a kid's... Uh, tube you know the tube of plastic toys these are fantastic the details really good um, obviously you clip off the flash and clean that off but those are looking good a couple of sharks really slick um oh yeah let's look at this one this is the Scylla Darkmire Shadow Empress personality model 130 points let's take a look at her real quick yeah look at that model fantastic really nice sculpt these this sculpt is really really slick lots of detail you know clean out that flash that happens in resin hopefully that's in focus and you can see it lots of detail on the base too look at that Fantastic, and she's got a little scepter or something that goes over here. Obviously, you have to glue that on. Be careful with that one. You know, very thin resin, but yeah, solid model. That that's amazing. Well done, antimatter. Here we go. Well done. Okay, so that's another dark mariner. What's uh, what do we got here? Oh, this one is the Vanguard Scout. Let's crack him out of his bag here. Wow. I love it. Just seeing if we can get a better focus on this guy. Might be necessary to go a little bit farther out here. So hopefully that's becomes clear. You can see that. Um, that is a really nice model. Yep. And this guy's got a gun arm that goes in here. So obviously we glue these guys together and that'll be that. Nice resin base. I love it that they're all resin. The quality is so incredible. Um, and you're not, um, you know, metal models, you know, tend to chip a little bit. And I, I try to be pretty 
careful with mine, but sometimes they chip. Resin, I don't really have any troubles with resin, so thank you, Antimatter, for resin models. That's outstanding and appreciated from my perspective. I know yours might be different. Do you like metal models? Or do you prefer resin models? Okay, so this guy is the... I want to call him a Sea Dog Corsair. Yeah, that's that guy right there. So he's looking good. Nice, uh, nice sculpt on him. Wow, really smooth. Good base. Really clean lines. I don't see a lot of like mold lines or any garbage on there. You know, he's got a big old, big old gun and a big old knife. He looks like he's ready to chop up some Darth Mariners into some into some bait really good i love this i love the helmet and i love the cape that's fantastic i think i need to start a fortune hunters army i don't know what do you guys think should i start a fortune hunters army tell me in the comments all right what's this guy this guy is lucius cromwell crusader of the abyss and he looks amazing he's pointing out there hey the bad guys are over there i don't know this guy looks like he's in some kind of armored dive suit it's fantastic. Looks like he's got some kind of rifle there. He's armed with a multi-spear gun, which is amazing. He's got a dive knife, and he's got some uh, armored dive suit, so that's good. He's the personality model. I think he's the commander of this force, so um, definitely check him out. Again, good sculpt. I mean, look at all the detail on the base, even. You've got the rivets on the armor. Oh, wow, that's very nice. Very happy with that. All right, and the piece de resistance. The Iron Predator mech, 116 points. He's got a torpedo, a multi-spear gun, and a power drill. So I know that they were still kind of... Ooh, maybe I can kind of make him put them together here. It, ah. This is great radio, folks, isn't it? All right, here we go. Yeah, so that's kind of what he looks like. That is... That's incredible. You know, he's only three pieces, and he's a big miniature. Nice smooth lines. I don't see any. I don't see any mold lines really to speak of. Very clean. Sorry, I keep getting that out of camera. I apologize. You know, when I clean this guy up for building, and assembly and uh, painting, um, I think he's got to be pretty clean. Really clean lines on that resin. Well done, antimatter. Looks great. Big old gun. Let me sing you the song of my people. All right. So that's kind of the miniatures. Let me kind of put those uh, in in camera here. So I'm pretty. It's that's pretty impressive. That's a pretty good haul. So you've got a couple of really big miniatures. You've got a leader. You've got a trooper, and you've got a heavy hitter on each team. Right. So you got a leader, heavy hitter, and a trooper, leader heavy hitter and a trooper there um that's a big win especially for a two-player box that i think you've got looks like you know i'd have to add up the points but i think you've got some pretty balanced forces here um and particularly with the mech and the biomech and with the you know wild sea creatures there within the sharks you're gonna have a lot of choppy and shooty fun there so that's awesome that looks great now i can't wait to get those on the table Especially the Dark Mariners. I'm a little bit of a sucker for the Dark Mariners, if you probably haven't figured that out yet. Let's take a look at the cards here real quick to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at in terms of cards. So well, let's start with the Fortune Hunters. Let me get myself in order here. A little bit of a mess. I'm trying to get things rolling here. Okay, so looks like you start with Lucius Cromwell. Let's see, can we focus on that? Yeah, he looks pretty solid. Um, quality 4, combat 4, decent resistances, 110 points, a knife, a spear gun, body armor 2, leader, iron will, that's good, immune to madness, plus 1 to will checks roll. That's good. Diver, ether tech, that's good. A little stronger than a Clegg, I think, but maybe not quite as... Uh, Points heavy as uh, Angus McBain, so maybe something nice in between there. Uh, mini spear gun, projectile minus projectile plus one. It's, you know that's a decent gun. That's good. That's a good mid-range leader. Probably something 
that can be useful to the fortune hunters. Although I'm a little bit biased. I think they've already got all the nice toys, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to complain. More models is more good. Uh, sea dog Corsair. This looks like a trooper type. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus a little bit here. Uh, good. Ooh, quality three. Look at that. Yeah. That's one thing. It's interesting. The, the leader here is quality four. So he's probably going to be a lead from behind kind of guy. Uh, quality three. This guy activates on twos next to a leader. Iron Will. That's great. Greedy. Interesting. He wants the loot, huh? Combat four. That's great. Resilient. Explosive spear gun plus one. Hey, yeah, this guy's solid. Crystal lamp, normal vision, and darkness. Yeah, this guy's solid. 81 points. That's not bad. That's a that's a good solid. Good, solid guy. Ooh, Will of Two. That's amazing. He's not going anywhere. Yeah, that's amazing. Good. And then this guy, the Predator, Iron Predator Mech. He's a uh, quality four, combat four, standard mech, artificial biomech, marine, uh, big, fast, ooh, fast load and rapid shot. Ooh. Wonder what that's on. The torpedo? No, the multi spear, multi spear gun? Yeah, that would, that's impressive. Blast, tor oh, that, that torpedo is nice. Look at that. Armor break three, projectile medium plus one. Oh, the power drill is really nice. Armor break two, hand-to-hand, -hand, breach plus one. Oh, wow, heavy armor, so four on the armor. That's really good. Sluggish, not surprising. Um, so that's a good, uh, that's a good showing for the fortune hunters. They've got some good... Got some good stuff there. So let's take a look at the uh, Dark Mariners here real quick. Led by Scylla Darkmire. Quality 3. Personality is Sea Mage. That's interesting. Elemental Magic and Psychic Magic spells. That's good. Uh, deep Eyes. Distract. Obfuscate. Mutant Spawn. Combat 2. Quality 3. You know, the Combat 2, she is not going to be a combat heavy hitter. I think she's there. This is, She's obviously a spellcaster. Um, so quality Oops, quality three. You get that near a leader. Um, and they're channeling or casting on twos. Yeah, she's good. She's 130 points. Let's take a look at her. Yeah, she's got three wounds on the body, so she's a little bit more survivable than some of the other um, octopus-type um, characters in there with Obfuscate. So, very nice. Um... Let's go with the shooter first. The Vanguard Scout, quality four, combat three. Deep Eyes, shooter medium. Amphibious, shooter, deep eyes. Ranger, I like this Ranger ability. Check this out. Can move through technical cover normally and shoot into or out of technical cover without penalty. That's nice. That's really, really nice. So like you mitigate the, com the uh, cover bonuses. Uh, that's a good disruptor rifle, plus one pretty decent so that's a nice that's a nice shooter uh for not a lot of points and then you've got your obliterator biomech pretty standard biomech stat line armor of two which is decent um dim-witted cannot be part of a group activation that's hilarious um deep eyes and then disruptor torpedo armor break two energy medium plus one resonate blast and unstable that blast is nice as if you watch the battle well Come back and watch the battle report that I'm in the middle of putting together, but there's some blasts in there, and that's that's fantastic. Okay, so you've got some really cool models to play with there in this in this starter set. You've got some sharks, uh, gray whaler shark. I'm delighted to see some resin whaler sharks or resin uh, wild sea creatures uh, included. That's one of the things that, particularly in my collection, I know that I'm I'm missing a lot. So thank you, Antimatter, for kind of getting these in there. This is fantastic. I love having kind of official models uh of, of for that sort of thing and then uh beast of chronos oh my gosh quality four combat five this is obviously a big bad i'm sure it's part of the scenario in the deep star crack and i actually own that model um that's a beautiful model if you don't have that one you i know it's a big one but you need to you need to add that to your collection gorgeous gorgeous model okay so that's the contents of the box in terms of the resin miniatures. Let's let's talk a little bit about um, these special ops cards. So obviously I haven't looked at the rule book, but my understanding is that you're going to have some of these cards in each scenario. 
um, and it's a special operation. Like you gain two victory points for stealing a treasure item found on a dead enemy model. Um, you can add these to your adventures um, in various ways, and I'm sure the rules cover this. We'll look at that a little bit briefly, but um, you know that's a card that, card bag that comes with it. But you've got looks like you've got all these special operations cards. I'm assuming you draw these. We'll take a look at the rule book here and like gain two victory points for being the first warband to pick up a valuable treasure item. Um, that's cool. So that's kind of a nice little thing to add a little bit of flavor to your game. Let's go back to that rules box or rule set. Excuse me. We'll put some of this back in the box. So that is super cool. That is, um, that's a lot of stuff in that box. You got some, you got some really nice miniatures in there. Uh, you've got a full rule book. You've got cards, you know, card sleeves to cover your miniatures. You've got a marker to cover, you know, to mark off your wounds. You, you, there's everything you need in this in this box to play the game. So this that's fantastic. So again, you know, I'm I'm assuming that you're going to read the rules. I'm not going to go through the rules of the game. Um, you know, this is all very standard stuff for Deep Wars and Shadow Sea. I won't go into that in too much detail, but let's look a little bit into the Kane campaign. Battle for Diablo Reef takes place as a campaign across multiple battle scenarios with different objectives and victory conditions. Depending on how the battles go, members of the warband can gain personal advances and warbands can gain advances. So looks like there's a table over here, like personal advances. Like maybe if you, you know, victory scenarios have different conditions that determine how well the warbands do in completing each scenario. So I'm imagining it'll tell you if you win, you maybe roll on the personal advances table. Looks like it's 3d6 or something. Oh, oh, VP. Maybe you spend VP. I don't know, folks. I'm looking at this for the first time, so I'm learning alongside with you. Victory points for achieving certain goals. Warbands can... Oh, there it is, right there. Warbands can spend VP for warband advances to improve the warband's effectiveness and personal advances to improve individual models' combat ability. That is really cool. I love that. So there is a campaign system where the how well you do in the game really applies to, like, hey... Hey, plus two when you get a group attack. I wonder if these stack. I wonder if you can get it multiple times. Uh, lucky, intimidating, mechanical experts, experienced explorers, tough as nails, uh, disciplined survivors. One plus one to quality checks when rolling the survival table. Ooh, that means, I wonder if that means if people can die. Survival table, look at this. Okay, when model dies in a battle, in one of these campaign battles, it may be, it may only just so happens that your friend is mostly dead. Uh, you may be mostly dead and has a chance of being revived between scenarios. So it looks like you need to roll on this. A uh, quality check, three successes, model survives. Zero successes, model is like dead, dead. Um, go get reinforcements. Okay, so that's cool. Um, uh, that makes me want to play this. Reinforcements, okay, got some rules for that. Difficulty levels. Okay, you can play it at difficulty levels. Um, all treasure artifacts are pre-activated. Name personalities always survive. Okay, so there's just basic rules like if you want to play this on beginner mode, like you don't really know the rules that well, or heading for replayability. If you want to play it again, maybe crank up the difficulty. All right, so tells you a little bit about the battle scenarios, um, events, the map layouts. Tells you what's in the treasure tables, victory conditions for that particular scenario. Events. Each scenario has special events that occur randomly. Some examples are changes in currents, swarms of krill appearing, underwater earthquakes, or attacks from hidden creatures in certain sections of the map. The events are described in the event table in each scenario. The difficulty level of the game modifies that. Okay, makes sense. That's pretty cool. Predatory Sea Creatures AI. That's probably borrowed from the original rules. So Diablo Reef, there's that, there's that story, you know. If you want to read that story, it's kind of the game that you're playing. So scenario one, first sighting. Ocean waves and currents were getting stronger in the shallow reef zone, but Lucius Croma was intent on reaching the bits of wreckage that were strewn across the sandy bottom below. Scenario is a skirmish where both warbands encounter each other and have their initial battle. This is basically a last warband standing mission. Makes sense. Event table. Okay. Roll a die after each game turn. So this is where the events come into play. Roll a die after each game turn, modified by the difficulty level on a five or higher. Roll again on the event table to see what happens. So, okay, you roll a d6. If you get a five, then you roll again, and this is something that happens. So it doesn't happen every game turn, so it's not quite so sporadic um, and gives you the victory conditions. And I love, like, we've already kind of thumbed through this before, but they show you how to lay out the, the map. That is super sweet. 
So I'm assuming each one of these is sort of similar. Yeah, it tells you how to set it up and whatnot. So this is really slick. I love this. This is fantastic. Um, so I guess one of the things I want to go back to is like these cards. I, you know, obviously I need to read the rules, but this, these are special operations cards. Um, let's see if I can find out how those come into play. I wonder maybe, maybe at the beginning of each scenario you pick something like that. I don't know. Special operations. Here we go. To add extra intrigue to a battle scenario, each player gets to choose two special operations cards from a deck of ten. There are special missions that involve killing or protecting specific models using physical activity, blah, blah, blah. Uh, gives you bonus... Okay, so basically, again... Okay, that, that's what I was looking for. At the beginning of each battle, you choose two of those, uh, and you can gain additional victory points. So that kind of adds another area of replayability. So, guys, this is fantastic. You know, this should also give you some ideas of, you know, what games you can play and whatnot. Um, oh, nice. It gives you a little gameplay summary. So this is really nice. I should copy that. Hand-to-hand -hand combat mod. Look at this. This is fantastic. Okay. Good stuff. Ancient artifact table. Yep. Hey, look at that. That's fantastic. One area with a very distilled version of all the special rules and what it means. Oh, boy. That is huge. Look at that. I mean, you can go looking it up in, in the book, but sometimes, you know, you got to leaf through it and find it to get... All these are on your cards as well. Like, for the new players, the, 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 I guess the reason I'm raving over this is, like, these are all on the cards, too. Like, all the special rules that your guy has is in this little box. But it's also described here, but it's not the full text sometimes. Like sometimes there might be specific things that you need to uh, go, um, you know, it'll tell you whether or not you need to look it up. But um, having this all condensed in one place is re that's really slick. I like that. Okay. All right. Well, that is the rule book, and I think we've kind of covered everything. Uh, that is the Deep Wars two player box set. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I love it. I think it looks fantastic. Um, worth every penny. I mean, look at all the stuff you get. So let me put this away real quick and let's dive into the Shadow Sea box set. I'm kind of, I love my Deep Wars, but lately I've been on a Shadow Sea kick, as you guys will see. Um, let me get these over here. Bear with me while I put these away. I think these were kind of gently folded like that. We're going to do that. All right. Let's crack open that Shadow Sea box so you guys can see what's in there as well. All right, so Shadow Sea. So like I said, Deep Wars is the underwater version of this game. Shadow Sea is the above water version of this game. So they, they've conveniently and wonderfully made a two player box set for the Battle of Deadwood Forest, which is a Shadow Sea version. So the races, some of the races cross over, some of the races are new. So in this box set, there is the um, Exabal and Empire, which are kind of the above land Amazons uh, type type race. Uh, they've got a they've got an ancient construct mech, and they're fighting the Draconids, who is a creation of the ancients or the Exabal and Empire, um, and they're kind of rebelling against their former masters. So again, nice solid cardboard, thick cardboard stock box. Um, looks good. Battle for Deadwood Forest. And here's what you get in the box. Okay, so you've got your creatures, right? Two Ripper Claw Lizards that have AI rules that are probably, if it's like the normal game, they, they try to go after the lowest point model on the board. Um, some models here. It looks like, ooh, look at that. you got a nice little layout there. Some other maps. So let's just dive in. I think my suspicion is that this is going to be pretty similar in terms of format and scope of the Deep Wars box. Excuse me. Um, miniatures. We're going to dive into that in a second. Get some dice. Three dice. Fantastic. Got your marker. Antimatter has really chock fold this box. I'm so... I, I, want to play the, I want to play these scenarios now. Scientific. Or, okay, so you got your special operations cards. That's fantastic. Um, you know, more counters. Got to have the counters to play the game. You know what the status is. Got your warband rosters here. Very similar. Got your medium. Ooh, I got an extra one. Maybe a, maybe it's my lucky day. Two players. Maybe I had two in the other one and I just didn't see it. I don't know. Got two in this one. Um, that's a nice one for each player on that one. Um, 
A little thank you card from the Antimatter Games crew. Thank you. Oh, some more. Oh, maybe I got a double pack. I don't know. Uh, but I got extra. I got extra cards in this one. I'm not going to turn those down. We always need more cards or more uh, status markers and measuring sticks. It's not not a problem. So these look fantastic. Let's dive into this. Oh, and there's a robot there too. All right. Check this out. Some more scenery. There's your blast marker. It's a short short stick radius. Um, there's your sorry, blast spray. Uh, some mushrooms. Looks like some treasures. You can use these for wild creatures. Some mushrooms. Probably some fauna there. I think that's the Dread King Lizard. I forget the name of that one. Um, these are some cutouts. They look fantastic. Going to help you play some of these scenarios, I'm betting. These mats... These might even be more impressive than the... I mean, the Deep Wars ones were awesome, but these are nice. I mean, they're, they, folks, this is, you know, this is... It's it's thick... Um, it's thick paper. I mean, it's not like... It's like construction paper, but it's glossy and smooth. Um, these look like they could go together nicely, taped together, and make a nice little encounter there. Look at that. Fantastic. Good for the scenarios that are being played here. These are really, the, the the artwork on these are outstanding. Look at that. So I'm assuming, again, there's print, special printed ones for each scenario, and I'm having a hard time gripping that one. There we go. Um, again, I'm assuming these go together like so. Maybe not that way. I don't know. Maybe I've got this backwards. Um, maybe it's supposed to go like this. I'm not sure. I'm sure that that's probably how it goes. Um, I'm sure that the scenario pack will tell me exactly how to put these things together. But, the, but I mean, look at that artwork. That's fantastic. Um, this looks like a fungal forest. I'll bet there's a fungal forest scenario in there somewhere. Yeah, that's totally a fungal forest. The quality of this art, the quality of the prints is really good too. I mean, this you're going to want to be careful with these. I mean, they're, they're thicker. I mean, it's thick paper. It's not like loose leaf notebook paper. It's kind of um, that plasticized, shiny. Oh, look at the bright, <laughs> shiny object. Um, you're probably going to want to be careful with this paper. I mean, it it's tough. It's good paper, but it you know if you're going to play it a lot, um, these things could get damaged. So maybe just kind of be careful with these papers. But I mean, look at that. I mean, it actually looks like it's actually glowing. I'm looking on the camera. Oh, that's impressive. What the heck that thing is? That looks amazing. That's uh, that's immersive. Very slick. Okay. Um, I'm torn. Miniatures or rule book? I want to do both at the same time. Let's look at the miniatures real quick. You know what? Yeah, let's look at the miniatures. All right. So we got some bases. Again, we've got our... Um, plastic sheets. Uh, wow, Ripper Claw Lizards. These are... Ooh, quality three on a wild creature. Brutal. Pack Hunter, long move. Ooh, long move. Savage does two wounds when it doubles you. Okay, Megalopede. Looks nasty. Quality three. Wow. Big stealth. Ooh, Dagger Tooth King. Quality 3, Combat 5. Look at that secondary stat line. Huge, tough animal. Oh. Okay, this guy's going to ruin your day. Don't mess with this guy. 177 points, but... Oh, AI routine, that's nice. I like that. I actually didn't really go into that in too much detail in the last one, did I? But... It's got the AI routine right there at the card. And really, if you've not if you're not familiar with uh, wild creatures in the game, basically they the, the turn goes the attacking player, the defending player, and then any uh, wild wild creatures. Uh, when it tells you exactly what they do right there. Harlequin Witch. So the Draconid side has a Harlequin Witch Slayer, a Cobalt Cell. Ooh, he's got like the little Wolverine claws there. Cobalt Salamander. And Tyrannus the Grey, that's the character. Quality 3, Combat 4, very nice. 116 points. That's great. Because uh, Kotloxi, the Lizardman Ridgeback Lord, I believe he's in the... I want to, don't quote me. I think he's in the 160s. So he's spendy. 
Um, but he's super tough. And this guy's fairly tough, but he's not... He looks like a good mix between um, a Ridgeback Spinebreaker, who's quality 4 leader, and Coat Loxy, which is a quality 2 leader. Um, he bridges that gap. So if you're looking for to make a list that can fit a leader, but you don't want to break the bank, or you don't want to have a suboptimal leader because of points, that's going to help you. Um, this guy looks cool. Lethal. Ooh, he's a spellcaster. What kind of spellcaster is he? Oh, he's lethal to spellcasters. Excuse me. Stealth clinging and shooter. What's he shooting with? Oh, crystal throwing knife. Okay. Yeah, lethal to spellcasters. That's huge because I believe one of the main models for the Axabellan Empire is um, a spellcaster. So this guy's, you know, pretty good. This is your brute. Uh, very tough. Many wounds on the body. Uh, weapons are plus one, combat four, quality four. Um, yeah. He's a uh, Savage Tail Splat combo attack, three hit. So he's a lot like the Jade Salamander. Um, a little bit more points. I want to say the Jade Salamander is 113. Um, he looks cool. He looks really cool. Okay, this guy's just got a wicked number of attacks. He's got good body armor, too. Um, exceptionally large and vicious. Very nice. I can't wait to get that guy on the table. Okay, so let's talk about the leader here. So this is the Axabalan Empire. Uh, we've got the Kotloxi Enchantress. Personality, quality 3, combat 2. Enchanter. Enchanter. I think that's new. Uh, ability to cast spells from the enchantment list enchantment list energy shield okay great ether tech yeah yeah good good um this is all great charged crystal staff and basically probably if you're attacking with that you're already in trouble no armor to speak of control device that's great so she can control the ancient mech sentinel which is this dude I love the fluff on these things. What's they said? Axabalans have recovered constructs from the temples of a lost elder civilization and deciphered their operation. These heavily armored mechs carry advanced weaponry and are almost unstoppable in battle. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Oh, okay. Quality four, combat four, pretty standard for a mech. Body armor three. That's great for Ancients of Adalon or Axabalan Empire. That's great armor for them. Big, tough, artificial, shooter long. Shooter long? What kind of... Eye beam. Energy long plus two. Oh my god. So this dude is f combat four. He's dice plus six. Shooter long. You stick him next to a control rod. Hopefully get two activations. Maybe you aim. Precise. Ooh. Plus two. So your dice plus... I want to say your dice plus four. Dice plus six. Ooh. I see this guy slicing off limbs at distance. I think that's fantastic. Um, Amatzeel, Dragon Hunter, Agile, Shooter Medium, good Rapid Shot, that's great. Forester, that's great. Lethal, Dragons, and Draconids. Um, excuse me. I believe there's Draconids in... Okay. All right. All right. All right, Draconids, you got your work cut out for you. A shooter medium, rapid shot, can shoot again if previous shot hits, causes a wound. Forester, move through Forester, fungal scale, fungal scenic terrain, excuse me, without penalty reduction, lethal. If an attack causes a wound on a Draconian or Dragon model, it causes one extra wound. Whoa, and at 86 points. Okay. She is really good against Draconids. So this is, these are very good lists. I mean, look at this, I mean, Dagger Tooth, okay, not so much. There. Um, here we go. Uh, boy, it's hard for me to say. I think these are actually pretty decently balanced. I think that's fantastic because, look, you've got your lethal against spellcasters. And then you've got your lethal against draconids. So that actually balances out because this you know, there's a little bit of rock, paper. I like what they've done here because this is a little bit of rock, paper, scissors. This model... It's really against, good against what, everything that's in this list. But if you play Shadow Sea, you know, she's good, but she's not she's not wicked good 
against other forces. She's really good against Draconids because she's got lethal Draconids. But this guy kills spellcasters all day because he's lethal spellcasters. With a quality three, you get him near a leader. He's activating on twos. You're going to get good aimed shots. And, you're combat f and combat four. So this guy... Yeah, he doesn't have any bonuses on his weapons, but at a combat four, he is doing some serious hurt. So I think, you know, I when I saw the lethal draconids and the precise long shooter, it's like, oh boy, these guys are good. But these guys, I think these guys are actually pretty balanced. It'll be interesting to see how they play on the table. But um, from a rule standpoint, I like that there's some rock, paper, scissors in that list. And it, it's not like complete one for one. Like one thing cancels out the other and vice versa. I think there's a little bit of synergy and whatnot there but i am interested to see how that plays out all right let's look at some models um the meat as it were okay ripper claw lizard well i tell you what antimatter games is really knocking it out of the park with the model quality with these particularly with these um well, i'm gonna assume that that's an i'm at um it's an Amazon weapon sprue type of thing. But this uh, Ripper Claw Lizard looks fantastic. Here's the other one. Right? Those look really good to me. All right. So I think that's the Enchantress or the Spellcaster Lady. Kind of get a sense of the quality there. Very nice. Kind of look at, uh, oh yeah, wow. Look at that one. That's a one piece resin miniature, folks. I don't think, I mean, look a little closer here, but that's one piece. Let's glue that puppy to the base. Wow. I don't really see any mold lines. I mean, obviously, you're going to have some flash you've got to clean off. So that's, you know, we expect that. I don't see any nasty mold lines or miscasting or anything like that. Well done. What's this thing? Oh, I think that must be the uh, Lethal Huntress model. Excuse my big fat sausage fingers there. Um... What do we got in here? Oh, here's the Draconid Leader. I wonder if we can help with the focus stuff if we do this. I don't know if that's helping. I ho I'm hoping these models are at least a little bit in focus. Um, but you know, he's got wings, but I think in terms of body, he's one piece. He's one piece on his body, so that's really quite awesome. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can find his wings. Where's your wings, buddy? Oh, here we go. He just got little wings. So, per the Draconid lore, there's really only one dragon, I think, that flies, so his wings are pretty little, so I don't think he's a flyer, but nice wings and nice base for him. Um, here is... Ah! Cobalt Lizard. He's going to be in multiple pieces. Again, no real flash to speak of. Really good quality. And some arms. Oh, wow, look at this. Okay, here we go. Here's that, um, that dude. The, uh, what do we call him? You know, the guy. The guy with the laser beam eye. The make mech construct. What's his name? I want to get this right. I'm new to this, folks. Um, he is the Ancient Mech Sentinel. Ancient Mech Sentinel. That's pretty slick. I like that. I like that pose. He's kind of like got power or fire coming off of him. Good sculpt. He looks very uh, Amazonian slash Aztec. Oh, wow. Okay. Do I need to start an army? Okay, there's the tail. And the claw, the, the wolverine claws. Ah, 
It's Wolverine and the head of that dude. Very nice. This is so nicely sculpted, folks. I mean, sorry. I mean, this is like, this is honestly like Forge World quality. This is really good. Okay. I know I'm fanboying. There's another tail here. Oh, I was I lied. The the no, actually is that his tail? Yep, that's his tail. I thought um I lied about the well maybe I did. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that tail goes on there. Anyways, I'll figure it out. But um I got some more bases in here. So that's the miniatures you get with this shadow ooh, th that's the miniatures you get with this shadow sea box. Um that's really cool. Again, three miniatures per side. You've got the wild, wild uh, creatures. Um, you've got your leader. You've got your brute. And you've got your regular soldier. Uh, so that's cool. You get a balanced mix um, for each. Um, that's really sweet. That's really cool. I like it. All right. So let's put the miniatures away real quick. Be very careful. Although these guys don't seem to be that fragile. That's good. Sometimes you worry a little bit about resin pieces kind of snapping off. They all seem to be, even the thinner parts seem to be pretty reasonable. Um, so let's put that away real quick. Um, and let's take a look at that rule book real quick. All right. Rule book time. So again, I'm assuming that this is going to be a lot like the, um, the Deep Wars book where, you know, it's going to give you some of the basic rules um, and kind of even the more advanced rules um, and the campaign and scenario play. So let's take a look real quick. So again, yep, they go through the scenarios. Um, oh, we got to talk about that enchantment magic. What the heck is going on there? Um, so yeah, you pick this up. Again, introduction, game rules, special abilities. Yep, they, they go through all the basic stuff. Everything you need to know how to play the game. Movement and range, checks... Physical checks, quality checks, hand-to-hand um, -hand combat, the table of what happens when you roll combat. Again, not going to go through the rules here, but movement, range combat, and all that stuff. Weapons, how they apply morale, ether tech, magic spells, enchantment magic. So I think this, is, I, I'm pretty sure that this is not in the main rule book. Maybe this, this, this is new. I think this is new. Comment below if you think I'm crazy. This seems new. Um, enchantment magic attack spell. So I think this is the enchantress. Like enchanted arrow, charm, somnus, intense ethereal vibration that causes the living creature to become temporarily unconscious. Oof. Uh, enchanted blade. Ooh. Minimum spell points. Balefire skull creates a magical demon skull bathed in blue fire that can be thrown at an enemy. I mean, who doesn't want that? So those are enchantment attack spells, enchantment magic conjuration spells. Will of the wisps creates a zone of glowing ethereal balls of energy that flit about and distract. Uh, tra tactical cover. Okay, ethereal boost spells. Targets one ally model and gives a boost to energy level, making it think and act more quickly. Oh, plus one activation rolls. Okay. Um, I wonder if that stacks with the control rod for the uh, ancient mech. Resuscitate. This spell targets one ally model, jolts to ethereal energy. Um, zone of levitation. Hmm. Zone of slumber. Oh, so the so like the Sominous. But maybe as a zone. Enchanted Doom. Three points. You know that's got to be the heavy hitter. Uh, this spell enchants the scenic features within the zone. They come to life and attack any model nearby. A free hack with combat seven and armor break one. As scenery flails and smashes against the victim. Woo! Nice. That is really cool. I, I think that's new. I mean, hey, maybe I'm crazy. If I'm crazy, comment below. Um, but again, looks like you've got a similar sort of game campaign system, battle scenarios, stern tier, difficulty level, survival table. I really like that they're involving kind of a, um, a progression table that you can play with your buddies. Um, that's fantastic. Predatory wild AI, 
map layout, treasure tables, and special operations, just like the Deep Wars one, uh, Deadwood Forest. So read through the storyline. It tells you exactly why these forces are fighting each other. I'm assuming you use the same warband, and you, in, particularly in this, but I'll bet you can create your own warbands and replay these scenarios maybe in a bigger table or whatever. You know, go wild. I, I, I'm going to play this these scenarios um, on their own with the models that come in the box, um, but I want to see how they play out with... Uh, with other things as well. So again, you know, here again, here's those maps. You know, the boiling well, scenario river of death. Oh, that's a river. Okay, those are like little islands that you can hop on. That's slick. Look at that. Another river one, deadly treasure, forest of tears. Mm hmm. Nice. And if you, you know, once you kind of look through these, if you want to make 3D terrain for these, I mean, it's obviously, you know, it's obvious that, you know, the intent is for you to use these pages. And I think, you know, you could play this game right out the box. Just take the miniatures, glue them to their bases, and you're ready to go. Um, but if you want to go nuts, you know, make tables for this. Post pictures on it. City of Las Tlacol. Mm, event table. Okay, roll a five. And then if we roll a five or six, then... Oh, there's that... Uh, the big bad dagger tooth king right there dagger tooth king starting point he's probably looking around for somebody to chomp so again here's your forces this these are the forces that are in this box but you can find all the forces and their point costs um on the antimatter web antimatter games website so um again great looking book very clean uh nice quick rules reference nice you know, special rules reference. This is, this is exceptional. I love this. So you got some great, so you got some great miniatures. You got a book that's got all the rules. You got everything you need at a pretty good price point. Um, I can't wait to play this. So well done, Antimatter. I think, you know, if you have questions on this, I'm happy to answer them, but I think, you know, hopefully this, this video gave you some ideas of what these products look like. Um, I love the miniatures. I love that they're resin. I love that the detail, the quality is great. The book is great. The card stock on these is all really good. Um, I can't wait to dive into this. And I think in particular on this one, if I'm going to be honest, the, uh, the new magic in this one, that's a nice little surprise. So check that out. If you're interested in Shadow Sea, definitely give this a look. I think it's a great price point um to get into the game it gives you a lot of good stuff to start with this the models that are in there i just looking at the stats i can see that they're utility they i don't think there's any kind of models in here that you're not going to find general use out of so take a look at those um and i hope you found this useful give me a comment and let me know what you think of this unboxing hopefully it gave you some information and um let me know what you think and thanks for watching and we'll see you next time